Hi, this is Pastor Ken from Vineyard of Hope in Osawatomie, Kansas. My prayer for you today is that God would touch your heart in a real and tangible way for a breakthrough in your life as you hear this message. Thank you for watching, and I want to give you a personal invitation to come and see what we're all about. The church information is at the end of this video. Now I hope you enjoy this message. God bless. Sin, I left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Oh, praise the Lord. He washed it white as snow. Oh, praise the one yeah. who paid my day and raised his life up. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise the one who Let's hear it, church. Death, give him honor and give him praise in this house. His life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one. I give you honor and glory in this house. My death, yes. Raise his life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one. Give him a hand if you love him. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the King of glory. Oh, man, I can hardly imagine being there that day. Amen. Can you imagine walking with Jesus and then all of a sudden he's taken from you? And then that third day came. Today I want to introduce you to the God of Suddenly. My message is called the God of Suddenly because I want us to understand and I hope that we would gladly leave here knowing and fully comprehending the truth that our God is a God of multiple suddenlies in our life. Amen? He suddenly shows up in ways that we could not even fathom if we would dare to take Him out of the box that us and our humanity have placed Him in and once again believe in a supernatural God. See, nature bows its knees to the God of all creation. Nature bowed it bowed its knee to God as he said, no, no, I'm not going to stay in this tomb. I'm going to resurrect. I'm going to come to life and I'm going to defeat sin and death for you. Today, I want to welcome you to the God of suddenly. Amen. Amen. It's exciting. Good morning, church. Good morning. <laughs> Today, I'm looking forward to introducing you to the God that I serve with all my life, whom I love, who saved me, suddenly saved me from sure death, chaos and defeat. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Had it not been for the grace of God, where would I be? Dead. And today, I want you to understand the way he showed up on my scene was suddenly. Like a wave, like a wave washing in and taking me out. Just to bring me back in and set me on solid ground. Amen. The God of suddenly is here today. He didn't die and stay dead. He rose again so that we would understand and forevermore. Live a life that is full of breakthroughs. One after the next, 
after the next to catapult us into his will for our life. What he's done for me, he can do for anybody. Whatever your hurt, whatever your habit, whatever your hang up, the God that we gave our life to, he is not limited by our ideologies and our theologies and our thoughts and processes. He's supernatural. Amen. He can take a meth head, an alcoholic, and he can make him preach the word. That's a big God, because that's an evil demon. I just want to tell you what he can do for me, through me, he can do to you and for you. And then through you, because that's how big he is. He is a suddenly kind of God, amen? amen? To fully comprehend this, we've got to define suddenly today, which is part of the breakthrough that I've preached to this congregation for the last three months from the beginning of this year. I believe that 2016, God is saying to this church, it is your breakthrough year. I've defined breakthrough. And we've learned that it's a sudden, dramatic, and important discovery or development. Well, isn't that what we're celebrating here today? A sudden, dramatic, important development for all mankind? Humanity had to acknowledge the King of Glory, this sudden day, this, this moment, this breakthrough moment, amen? This suddenly happened and it forever changed the world. It changed my life. It changed your life 2,000 years later. Come on, guys. This is a breakthrough moment. The God of suddenly showed up and death could not stop him. The grave could not hold him down. It's a beautiful event and I get excited about it because he did that for me. I don't deserve this. He did that for you and you don't deserve it, but, but it's not about being deserved. It's about his love for you. He saw you on that cross. Isn't that beautiful? The God has suddenly stepped in. Suddenly is defined as quickly and unexpectedly. How many of you guys have ever had a quickly and unexpectedly in your life? Yes, yes. Today I walked out the door and I almost quickly and unexpectedly split my rear again. It was slick out. Who would have thought it was going to be snowing and raining? I didn't watch the news. I didn't know this was going to happen. We all know what suddenly means. We have suddenlies in our life that are sometimes tragic and toxic. And then there are others that are dramatic and good for us and, and dramatic and bad for us. We all know what suddenly is. So it's defined in the dictionary as quickly and unexpectedly, immediately, instantaneously, straight away. We serve a God of suddenlies, church. His works and his wonders are never too late, although they might feel like it sometimes. Who's ever waited for something from God? Who's ever asked it and diligently waited? I want you to understand something. In the waiting, you can still have a suddenly when it happens if your attitude is right and focused on the king. As a matter of fact, if you're focusing on God, you're suddenly, no matter how long you've had to wait, it'll always be suddenly when he shows up. Because your attitude's been right. You've been focused on what matters. Not the gifts, not the goodies, not all the things God has for you, but the God who died and rose again for you. See, this is about you knowing Him, Him getting so inside of you that that's all that can come out. Amen? Amen. Intimate connection and relationship with Jesus Christ happens and it grows and suddenly, all of a sudden, you find yourself infatuated with growing in His Word and becoming His Word to those in your life. You want to shine. You don't want to do the things that used to pervert what love looks like in your life. You begin to really become convicted of those things. Suddenly, God steps in and He begins to wash your mind from everything you thought you couldn't be and developing you a new character. This suddenly God wants you to understand that he did it that day. He rose again to bring life, new life, resurrection life to people that would dare to believe. And it's still for today. Amen. New life in Jesus' name. The God has suddenly showed up. Amen? Ah, it's so fun. I wrote this. I said every amazing time he moves or touches your life can be a dramatic suddenly that builds our faith. We can live a life always amazed <clears throat> by the hand of God because God will suddenly reveal himself to us over and over and over again if we would dare to walk his will. Easier said than done sometimes, isn't it? We got this nasty old stinking flesh that just wants to be satisfied. I've got news for you. You can take control by the power of the Holy Spirit over this flesh. It is possible. It's written and his word cannot miscarry for your life. Suddenly it's how he came, church. Suddenly this virgin in a crazy is, is, is going to give birth to a baby. Suddenly she's pregnant. I, I don't want to be Joseph that time when she found out. That had been so frustrating. But think about it. Suddenly he came on the scene. Suddenly is how he conquered the grave. And suddenly church is exactly how he's going to come back again. Amen. Suddenly. It's promised in his word. And I tend to believe when he said, I'm going and I'm going to tear down this temple. It'll be teared down. But in three days I'm going to rebuild it. When he said he was going and he promised I'm coming back in three days. He kept his word. So I tend to believe when he says, I'm coming again for a bride. 
without spot nor wrinkle, that that day is coming, man. And I'm going to show that in the Word today. Praise God. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Matthew 23. Suddenly is how he came. Suddenly is how we'll come again, church. We celebrate that today. And we read of this event in Matthew 28. It says, early on Sunday morning, as a new day was dawning. How many of you guys got up this morning and knew a new day was dawning? Did you have that attitude or did you get up and go, ah, uh, somebody make coffee. I did both, so I'm just going to be real with you, right? I was like, ah, new day's dawning. Get the coffee, then I can pray. Uh, Josh, that's me, bro. Don't worry about it. We're the same. <laughs> Gotta have my coffee. <laughs> Sorry, that's funny. He said that to me, but that's how I am. I got to get my coffee. But God is good. A new day was dawning. How many of you guys know that today could be a new day dawning for you? In whatever your circumstance, whatever you are struggling with, whatever you're fighting, trying to fight alone, I, mind you, I want you to know that this can be a new day dawning in your life. If you'll dare to hear this word that I'm talking about, believe in the God of suddenly, things can change for you. For us as a body. This is going to be a challenging word today. In Matthew, we read of the events on that day. It says, early on Sunday morning, as a new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. <laughs> oh, oh, man. And it says, suddenly, everybody say suddenly. suddenly. Poke your neighbor. See if they're awake. Say, my God, my God. is a God. God. Oh, suddenly. suddenly. Now I'm throwing this mic. Poke them again. Make sure they're awake because I want them to hear this. Say, my God, my God. is the God, God of suddenly. suddenly. And it says, suddenly there was a great earthquake. When God, the supernatural, begins to interact with nature, I'm telling you, nature trembles when God steps on the scene. It's a beautiful act, amen? I could see it right now. I picture it. Suddenly there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone and sat on it. Now listen, I picture things and I just picture this angel coming down and moving that stone and sitting there and going, hey, look here, look here, look here. <laughs> you know what I mean? You thought you had him, Jack. No, sorry, wrong. That's how I see things. I'm sarcastic. That's what I do. I'm getting better, more refined, don't worry about it. Suddenly there was a great earthquake and the angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone and he sat on it. His face shone like lightning. Let me tell you something. You can tell when somebody or something has been in the presence of God or not. There's something that happens. You know somebody that's real based on their appearance, their actions, their attitude. You can feel when somebody's truly been in prayer and seeking God. You can hear whether they know God or they don't. The Bible says you know them by the fruit, amen? This angel came from the throne room of heaven and he came and he rolled, a, rolled away the stone and he's sitting on this stone. Oh, I love it. And it said his face shone like lightning and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards shook with fear as they saw him and they fell into a dead faint. And verse five says, then the angel spoke to the women, don't be afraid, do not fear. Oh boy. I think I would have been a little freaky deaky too, you know, if that happened. Just saying, you know, this is supernatural. Some of us, we, we don't want to believe the supernatural, but we'll believe in hauntings. But we won't believe in a Holy Spirit or resurrected kings. But, but talk about boogeyman in the closet and everybody's like, yeah, did you watch that paranormal show? It's real. Right. Satanic, demonic, angelic. It's real and the war is very real. We won't go there today. Don't be afraid, he said. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. I love verse 6 because it says these three words with an exclamation point. I can just see his face, this angel. It says this. It says, he isn't here. Ah, you thought you had him, but you didn't. God is good. Isn't that amazing? He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. God is not a man that he can lie. Even in man form, it's impossible for the Jesus that I serve to have ever issued a word that he could turn back on. He's the deity of Christ, God in skin. And he said, I'm coming back. And just as he said, the angel confirms what happened, what happened. And he said, just as he said it would happen. Come and see where his body was lying. You know us, it's not enough. It's not enough for us to be told we got to see, right? Show me state. Is that Missouri, right? Right? I think more of us Kansas are just like that. We live too close to them. It's rubbing off. He's risen from the dead. 
come and see his body's lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And he is going ahead of you in Galilee. You will see him there, but remember what I have told you. See, this suddenly church changed the world forever. And as we know it, it'll never be the same because of this moment that is. And listen, it's BCAC. All of time is measured in a countdown and a count up, right? A count up to the Messiah and a count down to his coming again. It had to have been such a monumental uh, moment in history for it to affect all of mankind because we forget stuff really quick. This had to have been that big for us to remember all these years later. We forget 10 great things that somebody does as soon as they say one bad word because that's in our human nature. So the events this day prove to be real all this time later because, because God is God. All of the earth shook. Everything went dark when he died. Not only that, when he rose again, if you go and you read the events, it says him and the saints, they all rose and they walked through the streets of Jerusalem. You think a zombie apocalypse isn't real? That was awesome. Let's read the events. They were so huge and so magnificent that all of time has been measured on this and all people see this event as something that has changed the course of humanity because it was that supernatural. Suddenly, after suddenly, after suddenly occurred so that you and I would have a biblical picture, a picture that forever could be implanted in our mind of what it can look like to live with the God of suddenly over us every day of our life. This God can never fail us. He's promised it so, amen? And here they are. The God of suddenly changed the world forever. Every year we come together and we recognize a sudden, important event that came for all of humanity because God's a God of suddenly. Isn't that beautiful? You're about, you about to give up, but suddenly. You about fail, and then God suddenly showed up. I about died, and, and suddenly. I'm getting excited. So many suddenlies as I look at my life, and I think, God, you were just right on time. Even when I woke up at KU Medical Center in the Nut Ward, suddenly, it's where I belonged. Amen? He's the God of suddenly, and He came, and we just read it, and that's what we celebrate today, but He promises that He's coming again, church. He's the God of suddenly who died and rose again, and there is a day of judgment that is coming where every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Suddenly, again, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1, or verse 2, I'm sorry, says this, For you know... For you know quite well that the day of the Lord's return will come unexpectedly. Now I told you that the definition of suddenly is quickly and unexpectedly. He will come again. His return will come unexpectedly. That's suddenly. Like a thief in the night when people are saying everything is peaceful and secure, then disaster will fall on them as suddenly as a pregnant woman labors in pains. How many of you women done had a kid? And suddenly it was on. That's what he's saying. When he comes again, suddenly, it'll be like a thief in the night. Nobody knows the day nor time. We can assume, we can weigh the me and measure time and events, but I'm telling you right now, it's going to be suddenly. The Jesus that came and he rose again is suddenly going to come back for us, church. And then we're going to live here. People get freaky deaky. We're going to have an There's a lot more to it. Read your Bibles, church. I can't go there today. What I do want to make clear today is that same God that is a God of suddenly that came and that we celebrate his resurrection today that is coming again, he is a God of suddenly in the waiting. While we live life, my point to this whole message, if you don't hear anything else at all, is don't just celebrate the Jesus that rose again for you and I and that's coming again. Celebrate the Jesus that is a God of continued suddenlies in your life. When everything is tearing you down, he is the God that comes and takes care of suddenly your enemies. Suddenly the fire that you're in. Suddenly God shows up and he begins to move on your behalf if you'll dare to believe and let him. Let go of control. Let go of trying to be in charge of your own, your own life and give it to him and watch what happens. He becomes the God of continued suddenlies. Amen? Amen? He doesn't want walls between you and him. And we see this in Joshua 6. He's the God of suddenly who destroys walls that are holding you back from his promise. God's people were moving into Jericho. I preached on this at the beginning of the year. And God said, there's a wall keeping you between the promise, my word, and the promise. I'm going to tear down that wall if you'll dare to obey. And we see this. How many of you guys know he's a God that wants the walls destroyed that are holding you back from breakthrough? 
We see this in Jericho. In Joshua 6.20, it says this. When the people heard the sound of a ram's horn, they shouted as loud as they could. And everybody say? Ha! Ah, you almost got it. We're Pentecostal church here. And everybody said? Suddenly. It says suddenly the walls of Jericho collapsed and the Israelites charged straight into the... Because God wants to demolish every wall that is keeping you from an intimate connection with Him. He came. He rose again. Right? He's going to come again suddenly. But you know, right now in the waiting, when you have walls that have been built up because life deals you an unfair card, deals you an unfair game, or you in your rebellion build walls that are wide and high, God wants to demolish the walls so that you can suddenly see that right before your eyes is the answer. That love is looking you in the eye and you're too blinded to see it because your will is stronger than that. Let go and let God. And suddenly you'll see a change. He's a God who wants the walls to crumble like that day. He's a God that when you're in the middle of a storm and it seems like there's no way out will show up. We see this in Matthew in chapter 8. We see that as Jesus was on the boat, here's another suddenly. The storms were raging and the disciples are all coming to Jesus because he's taking a nap and it's getting really rough and rocky and everything else. And this is what they say. They say, they say Jesus, we're going to capsize. We're going to die. Did you bring us out here to die? They wake him up, right? He's taking a nap. And he responds in Matthew 8, 26, why are you afraid? You have so little faith. Then he got up and he rebuked the wind and the waves. And everybody say, Amen. suddenly there was a great calm. He didn't rebuke the people. He didn't rebuke the guys. He rebuked the waves. He looked at them and he said, stop it. <laughs> and suddenly when the word comes forth, God will be honored. I like Mark where it puts it like this. It said this, when Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and he said to the waves, silence, be still. And it says, and suddenly the wind stopped. How many of you have been through storms where you're waiting on the God to suddenly show up because all hell is breaking loose around you? Amen. I've been there. I live there sometimes in ministry. And I'm trying to tell you today that the same God that rose again is the God of your storm. And sometimes we have to stop and we have to listen because it's too loud. The noise is going on. We have to listen for him who is saying, silence, be still. It's going to be all right. He's the God of your storm if you let him be. God will never, never negate our free will. And that's another beautiful part of this God of suddenly. That leads to the next point. He's a God of suddenly who will allow your sudden spiritual awakening, even if it hurts. He's a God of suddenly church. We look at Adam and Eve when they were first brought in into the world and, and God created the most beautiful thing, humanity, amen? It says this, and this was after they rebelled and took the apple and ate the apple and did what they weren't supposed to. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 7, it says, at that moment their eyes were open and they suddenly felt shame. How many of you guys know when you're living apart from God's will for your life, even if it hurts, he will allow you to experience that pain and that shame for a minute so that you run back to him. That's how big he is. He will not negate your free will and take that from you. That's love. He could. He's God. He didn't want another donkey. He's got another J.A. He's running around. He got enough of them. <laughs> he didn't want that. He wanted you and I to understand that he, we can choose, if we allow him to open our eyes, we can choose to live a life free <laughs> with the God of suddenly. You thought you couldn't make it. Suddenly he reveals things that are not good for you. That's conviction. Condemnation is not of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We all know that, but let's keep going. It says, but God did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. If anybody brings you condemnation during your journey and your chase as you're pursuing God, not when you're sitting idly by, if they're trying to condemn you in your walk, you look at them and you tell them, shut up. Condemnation is not Christ-like love. Amen? Maybe don't tell them shut up. That's not nice. The Bible is the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. But you know what I'm saying. Don't listen to the lies. Keep growing. Our pace is our pace. I don't know who that's for, but if you're not moving as fast as you think, I want you to know something. If you're moving, you're moving fast enough. Keep going. Don't stop. Somebody said something about the ladies thing the other day and it struck me pretty cool. It was, I can't forget, I can't get it out. Somebody said, even if you take three steps forward and then two steps back, you're still one step further than you were when you started. And, and who shared that with me? But that was great. It, it blew my mind because God wants progress in this thing, not perfection. And if we stop making progress, we will miss the suddenlies in our lives. 
We will miss that sudden dramatic breakthrough, which is simply this, discovery and development. I'm telling you, God wants you to discover who you are in Him, not yourself. He wants you to develop into what He's called you to be, His will, not your will. And I'm telling you, it's in that submission that you find power you never thought you had. Amen? That's when you experience the suddenlies. Then He shows up and you're like, what? It, it happens in finances. I've had people hand me $10,000 checks because suddenly we were in need and suddenly God. I'm serious. You want to experience suddenly, give it all. Give it all up. Yeah. Are you fighting some kind of temptation that you think you can't win? I've got news for you. There's a God of suddenly that can empower you to be an overcomer. As a matter of fact, what he says is you are more than overcomers. More victorious through Jesus Christ. But see, you haven't figured out that suddenly for your life because you've yet to yield that portion of you. It's comfortable. I'm daring you to understand today that God is suddenly wants to intervene. He wants you to know that kind of love. This is a love life. I'm in love with a man. His name is Jesus Christ, and he straight rocks my world. Man, he's good stuff. He's changed me. We celebrate him today because he's a God of suddenly. But God. Oh, I can't do it. Well, but God. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. Suddenly he shows up. Even if it hurts us, he'll let us see where we're going wrong. Amen? I think that's love. He's the God of suddenly when your enemies are relentlessly attacking. Who's got enemies? The Bible tells me clearly in Psalms 23 that one of these days, and check this out, I want, my way, I want my enemies to watch. You know why? He says he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My cup runneth over. I can't wait. This is what I like seeing. You know why? It's proof that all those haters be telling me five years ago, you ain't God, you ain't, ain't going to make it. Look around. Don't you dare limit my God. I had a guy limit me. He said, he said this. I'm going to share this with you because this speaks volumes to dysfunction. He said... He said, why are you always bragging about what God's doing over there? You're just bragging about that church and those people. You're just bragging. And I said, I said, what are you talking about? I'm testifying. I, I'm excited about the lives of the people that I serve. Something on the inside began to rise up in Ken Tyson. <laughs> and I held it in for a little bit, and then all of a sudden, I let him have it. But it wasn't a bad. It was under the unction of the Holy Spirit. I said, listen, you can doubt me and your hatred for me and your dysfunction towards me all you want. But don't you dare doubt my God. Amen. I ain't done nothing, but God has done everything in this community that he needed to do. Yeah. He's the reason that we're growing. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My cup runneth over. Yeah. I dare the enemy. Keep coming, man. Yeah. <laughs> look, 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 there was eight people when we started here. 200 and something salvation. Don't live it, God. That's not enough. Let's keep going. The God of suddenly wants to show up and he wants to show out. He wants to show off. So that people will begin to understand there's hope. This isn't for a, a show. This isn't for some kind of theatrical event that we want to make everybody see and music that's pretty. It's because God wants you to experience a love that goes beyond any perverted love you've ever accepted in your life. To be able to look in the mirror and say, I like that guy, is a beautiful thing. To be able to look in the mirror once again and say, I love that person because the shame has been put to rest in your life is one of the most amazing things you'll ever experience when you fully submit to God. The God of suddenly wants you to suddenly look in the mirror and go, oh, there you are. You're not that bad. You're a good person. You're beautiful. You were created in the image of God. There's greatness in you. That's what he wants. That kind of love to come into you so that you can experience healing from your broken places. But you got to let go. Amen. When you're in the fire, remember God is the God of that fire too. The God of suddenly will show up. One of my favorite shows, or not shows, I, show, I, I, I picture everything in my mind. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When they were, wouldn't bow. Who's ever been there? Where you've been asked to bow or compromise and you stood for yourself or you stood for God. Well, they wouldn't bow. And, and the, the king said, throw them in the fiery furnace. How many of you guys know when you're in the fire, still, still God is there? And he's still the God of suddenly in that fire. I know I'm skipping all over, but we'll go ahead and go there. It says this in Daniel 24, it says, But suddenly Nebuchadnezzar jumped in amazement. He threw them in a pit. Have you ever been in fire, been in trouble? I lived in trouble till I graduated. Then I stayed in trouble till 32. Praise God. I know trouble. Some of it was my own fault. But after that, my faith brought a lot of troubles. 
I was throwing in a lot of fire. Hey, can I just say something? Don't create your own storm and expect it not to rain. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Amen? But he's still the God there that wants to suddenly pull you out. Yeah. After I got saved, I began to find myself in the fire, in the line of fire, even from religious fanatics who weren't truly fanatical about Jesus, but about an agenda. And I began to really, really seek God, and he took me to the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and the big brother, and Abednego. You'll get it one of these days. So. And they were in the fire, and God, show, God showed me how, how, how amazing it was that in the middle of a fire, he would protect them, and the very thing that tied them up, because the God that suddenly showed up, was removed from them. Nothing was burnt but the ropes that held them back. And it said that Nebuchadnezzar looked down and he saw in there and he said, he said, suddenly, suddenly, there's that word again. I see what seems to be that of four men instead of the three. Did we just throw three in? But there's another who looks like the son of God. That was Old Testament. How would he know what the son of God was? It was, a, it was, a, it was an awakening. A God moment where God showed him, you can't mess with me. I'm the God of suddenly. Amen. Amen. I don't know what your fire is and what your problem is, but I want to remind this church today that he is the God of suddenly. But we have to put ourselves in the right place or the suddenly can be one of two things for our life. It'll either be a sudden traumatic experience or a dramatic experience. What do you mean? What do you mean? Rebellion breeds traumatic experiences into our life. But repentance creates a dramatic turnaround for everything that we become. God will not tolerate Rebellion for long from anybody living in it. Let me explain. It says this. It says this. The blameless will be rescued in Proverbs 28, 18. The blameless will be rescued from harm, but the crooked will suddenly be destroyed. I want you to understand something. There comes a time where you have to either choose to go all in or stay in your rebellion and face the traumatic events that that creates for your life. Again, if you don't want it to storm, don't create the rain. Or don't want it to rain, don't create the storm. That's it. That's good. That's good. Tweet, tweet, blah, blah. Proverbs 6 says this, but they will suddenly be, be destroyed. Suddenly, broken in an instant beyond the hope of healing. It's talking about rebellious people here. Every one of us today has a choice to continue how we're going or truly fall in love with the king. To believe that the God of suddenly still applies to our life today or continue to walk in our rebellion. I believe that there's no reason this church should ever be empty. I believe that that it shouldn't be a Christmas Easter only thing, that we are not the CEOs of our life like we think, that this should be an everyday love life with the King, that we should be a church outside of these walls and then come together and celebrate inside like He's called us to because that is what He calls the church today, the Bride of Christ. And when we fail to do that, we depreciate the value of the King of Glory's Bride. And I want you to know, He says, I'm coming again suddenly for a bride without spot nor wrinkle. We need to be here. We need to be present. I, I had to throw that in there. There should be no reason that Easter is the only time the church is packed. Amen? It should be how we live. It's how we grow together. It's how we experience our, our gifts and our talents. And it's how we are taught to go out and use them. I want to encourage you, if you are a CEO, give over... Give over that, that, that leadership to the king and start diving in and see what God has for you again. Fall back in love with him. He just wants to love you. And you know what? I get to be used to do that here at this church and other people that are in this leadership team have grown into a place where we can grow with you and you can grow with us and you can experience true miraculous intervention because God is still alive. Amen? Amen. It's beautiful. But you can't stay. God is a God of suddenly. He'll do, it. he'll do it traumatically or he'll do it dramatically. But you will. You will. He will get your attention, church. He will get your attention. I don't want my rock bottom to be any further than it already has been in my life. <laughs> it gets hot sometimes and the fire is really deep. And I like to wear my big old holier than thou mask and call my home oh, pastor can. But I fight fires every day. Fires that are temptations this flesh wants to give into. Quitting. Don't do that. You don't need to do that. It's not. You're not really the man. How many of you guys have ever heard those things in your life? But I, want, I got news for the devil. That's, that, greater is he that is in me. Yeah. Greater is he that's in you. You want to experience the suddenness of God, give up fighting God and just give in. Yeah. We need a church that will grow in love with him again if we want to make a difference. Amen. Yeah. I know that's growing in this church. I'm not saying we're not. I see it. 
I see it in most of the congregation, but there are some that are still lagging. And I want you to know something. He loves you too much to let you fall behind. We're seeking holiness and purity according to the word standards and righteousness according to the word standards again in this church. How can you say that? You got tattoos and all that kind of stuff. I do not live in compromised church. That's a whole different story. We can talk about that if you ever want to. I want you to know freedom in Christ means I don't have to sin every day. Neither do you. Freedom from sin and death is what he died and rose again for. And some of us have accepted the suddenlies of our life to begin to live in that. Yeah. Amen? He suddenly wants to show up and show you what you can be. And then he'll show you off. What you mean? Laura, stand up for me, Miss Laura. I put you on the spot. He's showing off because he healed her body. Sonny showed up. Stand up, I'm sorry. Showed up, showed up, showed up. He healed him just recently, physically. If you've been saved as a result of this ministry, stand up. <laughs> if you've rededicated your life as a result of this ministry, stand up. Wow. If you've been baptized in this church, stand up. Oh, man. I got to get up here so I can see this. I celebrate five years. If you come back to the Lord after running for a long time, stand up. <coughs> now I'm going to share something with you. He did it for you because he wants to do it through you. He wants to show you off. Yeah. He showed up in a suddenly kind of way in your lives and he's planted you in a place to grow so that he can show you off. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. Yeah. And what he's done in your lives, church... He wants to do through you. Today we have to say, we have to say, I'm not going to live my religious standards anymore. I'm going to live in love with the king. Yeah. I'm going to look like love once again. Love says yes and love says no. Don't get it twisted. Yeah. The true Christ-like love isn't one that goes, it's okay, I tolerate it. No, 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 no. It says, I love you. I'm not going to judge you, but I can't accept that. Let's just agree to disagree and keep going. And let God do what God's going to do. Amen? So I say that saying this, look around. This is the hand of God. And God is a big God. This is nothing. He wants to make you the church that reaches this community, not Ken Tyson. I'm nothing but a man, but my job is to mentor you. If you're not here, I can't. But if you are, I'm going to mentor you to go out and reach these people in this community and, and watch what happens. Amen? Give God a hand for what he's doing in your life. The God of suddenly will always honor his word. Will always honor his word. What I took on as a pastorate over five years ago, when I was driving back from work, because I, I, for a whole year I drove to the next time back full time, before I came full time here. God said that Osawatomi would be known for my house. Not the nut house. I know that may not be politically correct, and I don't say that to diminish or demean anybody in any way, but that's how he spoke to me as I was in prayer. It was one of the most beautiful God moments I think I've ever had besides stepping across that threshold. And he said, this is not a doorstep to something greater. This is your destiny. Those are words that I've had in moments with God. That when he said that this place would be known, I take him at his word. This is going to be a lighthouse. And you're the people that he's going to use to do it. If you can do this for more than just a season. This needs to be year-round love life, church. I'm going to challenge you to give in, give up, chase God like you never have before so that you can begin to see what he's created you to be. We are going to be a move of God. Yeah. He's promised it. The God of suddenly will always honor his word. So this Easter, this Easter Sunday, I pray you fully understand that Jesus Christ came, lived, died, and he rose again so that you and I could walk with him. Walk with him. Eternal life is the gift of God now. Not just afterlife, but now, in you, with you, living, walking, talking, your counselor, your advocate, the spirit of the living God. God walked in the garden with Adam and Eve, and now you have the opportunity to walk with the King of Glory through this life. Jesus will suddenly show up if you believe. Some of us, we've been waiting, we've been seeking God, we're praying from 5.30 to, to, to 6.15 every Sunday. I've asked you guys to come for corporate prayer before the service because we're praying for the suddenly. Yeah. 
I believe, church, that we're getting closer to seeing Jesus show up. Yes. He does show up. How many of you guys know that Jesus will show up? Amen. We see that as they were waiting to see him in Luke 24, 36, it says, and just as they were telling, they were telling about it, Jesus himself was suddenly <laughs> standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. I want Jesus to show up. Yeah. Yeah. Suddenly. I want him to show up in your lives like he has mine. And not just one time, multiple times to reveal to me that, that, you know what? I am nothing, but he is great. I am nothing in myself, but beautiful in his eyes. In his hands, he creates beautiful things. And me in his hands, beautiful, beautiful things take place, right? Why? Because the word of God says that he is the potter and we are the clay. How many of you guys are ready to be molded? Acts chapter 2, one of my favorites in the whole word. Matter of fact, written under this carpet right here on that wood that we were praising God on last week, I have Acts chapter 2 and I said, Suddenly, suddenly there was a sound from heaven like that of a roaring mighty windstorm and it filled the house where they were sitting. My prayer is that the church, this church becomes the upper room experience for anybody who walks in. Amen. What do you mean? That the suddenly would apply to their life, that they would suddenly know that they're in the presence of God. That people would drive by and just know that God is in this house. It's not too much to ask because he's God. Like, he didn't just create Adam. He created the dirt. Where's he at? He created the dirt that Adam was made of. Let's think of this is God. He wants us to be a suddenly church. He wants you to suddenly be involved with him and him in your life so that you never accept counterfeit love again. Amen? God is good. Mm. Mm. I don't think I need to preach no more. Isn't that cool? I'm going to put the notes away. Can I just be real with you? Yeah? yeah. You wouldn't expect anything less, right? If you're broken, he can fix it. If you're hurting, he can fix it. Amen. He's that kind of cool. No man can fix your problem. But a God, a God that loves you so much, wants to suddenly step in and take over if you let him. I really don't know what else to preach today other than this. What a day to celebrate. Amen. Amen. We're going to eat at 2 o'clock. We're going to celebrate the God of suddenly with food because I eat a lot. But right now, with every eye shut and every head bowed, would you just bow your head, close your eyes for me? I would be a fool to walk out of here and not ask if you want to give your heart back to God or even for the first time, doesn't matter. And I would be a fool not to offer the opportunity and I'm not going to do it in big, large, crazy, dramatic fashion. Today, I really just feel the peace and the presence of the Holy Spirit. But if you're running and you haven't experienced the God of suddenly and you've been running and running he wants to come into your heart and make all things new. And He wants to do it in sudden fashion. So I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you to understand why the rest of us are celebrating is very real. And the God of suddenly that came into our lives and continues to change us and mold us and make us and direct us and grow us and empower us to live above our hurts, habits and hang-ups, that God wants to suddenly take part in your life. But you've got to make the choice. You've got to say, Jesus, come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. And we're going to do this in kind of a calm manner. And I don't usually do this because I'm a pretty loud guy. But if you have been running from God long enough and you're ready to give your life to Christ, I just want you to put your hand up and then down. Mm. Mm. No more running. No more running. Now we're going to pray. We're going to say a prayer together. And if we all pray it. If we all pray it. I want you to remember that you're praying it and you're believing it for your brother and sister. Maybe they won't feel so uncomfortable. I am catering to it. I usually say I want you bold and brave like Jesus was and come up here and stand. But for some reason, the audience that we're supposed to meet today, I believe that you have a gentle spirit 
and a soft heart. And so God's, God's doing this in a nice, soft manner for you. I want you to just begin to pray with me. Say, Dear Jesus, today I believe in the unbelievable. I'm a sinner, so forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ came, that he died, and that he rose again for me. So come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior for here on. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God is good. Some people give their life to Christ. Give my hand. God is good. You don't need to know who they are. But I want you to know if you did, if you haven't got a devotional from me already, I've got devotionals for you um, that I give to anybody who's made that new, new um, decision to give their heart to Christ. And I really want to meet with you. So sometime connect with me. Some of you that raise your hands, connect with me and, and, and let's begin the process of discipling. You can't do this on your own. Everything I do on my own, I mess up. My greatest thinking gets me in the biggest trouble. And that's why I need you and you need me and we need each other. That's what the church is designed for. Not to tear each other down, but to build each other up. Amen? Amen. How many of you are continuing the celebration today of the, the resurrection of your king? Who's doing it? God. <laughs> Go out this week and get into the word, man. Make this an everyday thing, not a Sunday pep talk, okay? Give your heart to God, man, and let him run you just... Let him run you over. Ah, oh, it's great stuff. And watch what he does. Amen. I pray God blesses you coming and going and that you would have his favor in all your ways. Lord, we thank you for this day. We again celebrate the resurrection of a king, the Lord of Lords, King of Kings. I pray you bless coming and going your faithful servants, that they would walk in abundance, and Lord, that they would walk with joy and joy to the fullest, God. You said the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but you come that we might have life and life to the fullest. So I pray the fullest over this body that they would experience the tangible presence of the Holy Spirit in their prayer closets and that your word would come alive and leap out of the pages and begin to transform their minds. I pray a blessing over them in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. And everybody said, amen. Love somebody on the way out. Have a blessed Easter, church. <laughs>